please allow me to introduce myself. So my name is Vishal Prakash. I am a product manager at ProSoft. Uh, I've been on board for about 15 months. Uh, my background is in SCADA and telemetry. Um, I used to work for an IT manufacturer previously, and my experience is in the utility sector, so whether it be oil and gas, water, wastewater, uh, power, and broadcast. Okay, um, please feel free to post your questions through the chat window. Uh, we will get through all of the questions before the end of the webinar. Uh, the slides, we've got about 20, 21 slides. Uh, that should take us about 40 minutes, and then we should have a good 20 minutes or so for the question for the Q&A uh, session. Um, so once again, thank you all for taking the time and joining ProSoft's uh, webinar on simple, secure, managed networks uh, for connecting remote sites. Okay, let's get started. All right. Uh, so for those of you who don't know uh, about who ProSoft is, uh, ProSoft has been around since 1988, so 30 plus years in the business, uh, and we are headquartered in sunny Bakersfield, California. Uh, we do have a global presence with multiple offices um, in APAC and EMEA, uh, Latin America, and we've also got 24-7 product support. So. What is it that ProSoft does? Um, we are very well known uh, for our protocol converters. So these are both for in-chassis product uh, solutions, whether it be it on the Rockwell or the Schneider platform, um, and also our gateways. This is really our bread and butter. Um, and we've got, we support scores of protocols, whether they're traditional industrial protocols or non-traditional protocols. Uh, and we also support OPC UA as well. So we've got a gateway that can uh, support or take Modbus or Ethernet IP and convert it to OPC UA. Um, and we have also have a bunch of products and solutions to extend your connected enterprise. So this includes uh, remote connectivity. That's the focus of this today's webinar, where we're going to talk about both the remote connectivity and the products in that portfolio that allow you to create the secure managed network to communicate with your remote assets. Uh, we've got wireless. Uh, we are probably the number one wireless solutions provider uh, for Rockwell. So this is industrial Wi-Fi, and these products are SIP safety certified, where they're using some of the demanding applications like roller coaster to guide rides, um, and also to make the All-American Jeep as well. And uh, we've got flow computing solutions. Um, these are in-chassis flow computing solutions that is certified for global operations. Uh, and again, this greatly enhances Rockwell's offering in the oil and gas industry. Okay, so despite you know, us being around for 30 years and doing more than just protocol converters, uh, believe it or not, today we are still called the Modbus guys. Uh, and it's for good reason. Uh, our most popular YouTube uh, video is the Modbus training video, uh, which is pretty amazing. So even though we are known as the, as the Modbus guys, um, our view at ProSoft is that the future is now, and we've sort of got the tools, and so the products and the solutions that you need to become smart in the application. Um, and you know whether that application is in material handling or remote access, remote communications, uh, modernization, we've got the tools um, to help you get smarter. Um, if you saw the previous slide, if you look at what ProSoft does today, whether it be the protocol converters um, or those other solutions, the common theme among them is connectivity which is also the basis for any IIoT strategy. Um, so IIoT, or the Industrial Internet of Things, uh, that certainly is a buzzword today. Uh, but we've got, again, the tools and the solutions in place to help you with that. Um, so the connectivity piece, and then also taking that information and ensuring the data translation, which is a protocol conversion, and also the flow of that data, so transferring that data between where you want to go from point A to point B. Um, of course, for you to finish that, you've got the storage and the analytics part. Um, and then once you've done that, you've got the intelligence, which sort of completes that picture. Uh, but today, ProSoft can certainly help you with the connectivity and the data translation and the flow of that data. Um, 
So now that you guys know what ProSoft is all about, which I think most of you already knew, um, so we're here today with this webinar because uh, we've solved another challenging problem, and that is setting up a safe and secure communications uh, between remote sites. Um, so before we do, kind of wanted to give you a quick history about uh, some of the more traditional, a little bit of history on, on remote communications itself. Um, you know, most of you guys are aware that remote communications has been around forever. Um, you know, um, I'm not sure if many of you recognize this image. This is actually from a lot of the Rings movie. Um, the good news is that we've moved on from the type of remote communications that happened in Middle Earth. Um, and today, if you look at what's happened over the last sort of 50 to 70 years, um, there has been um, significant changes um, in terms of uh, whether it's point or uh, the, the least line type communications. You've got PSTN, uh, radios, different types, fiber optic, and of course, the newest one uh, being cellular communications. So most of these methods, you know, they did have their advantages for the day. Um, and let's look at a couple of these very closely uh, with a little bit more in detail before we sort of move on um, to the cellular communications. Um, if you look at least line, for example, these were point-to-point -point networks, um, you know, where you had, uh, these were sort of slow speed, uh, low bandwidth, so you could not bring back a lot of information. Um, users were typically limited to bringing back status information only. Um, the lease line is not free. There's actually typically a fixed cost per annum, and they can certainly run into thousands depending on the system. Um, it also, one of the biggest disadvantages with lease line was that it took forever to fix. And that time is only just getting longer and longer to the point now where telcos are either not fixing it, um, and they're certainly not adding anything new. So the ability to expand an existing system with lease line simply does not happen. Uh, the next one, sort of a closer look at, was the PSD and serial radios. Um, here, this one provided customers sort of with the highest speed and bandwidth, which allowed them to bring back some basic analog data, and then also starting to do some simple forward control. Um, the cost for a radio system is high, and really the reliability of the radio architecture, in particular, depending on the geography. Um, and then as soon as you started adding things like repeaters and base stations, uh, your initial cost for a radio-based system can be very, very high. Uh, if you look at PSTN, and it's virtually non-existent today. I mean, who's got a dial-up, you know, one of those rotary dial-up phones today in their house? Um, again, telcos, you're not installing these analog lines, and if you do want to get them, they're very, very expensive. Um, they take forever to fix and so forth. Okay, um, so if you look at these technologies, you know, how then do we solve this remote communications? How do we make it simple, secure uh, for remote communications? I mean, certainly these technologies were good. Uh, you know, like I said, they had the benefits in the day, especially radio, still very popular. Um, you know, it, it, and it's got its place for certain types of uh, instances. But one of the things that I've learned or I listened to in, in one of the recent TED Talks was that, uh, believe it or not, today on Earth, um, other than the air we breathe, the second most abundantly available thing is actually cellular coverage, and it is ubiquitous. Um, so the idea is, you know, and these have gone very reliable, very secure over the period of time, uh, highly available. Now, how do we take advantage of this readily available service for industrial applications like remote control? And that's what we're going to talk about, what the solution is. So for me to explain that, what I wanted to do was to really tell you a story, and I wanted, you know, basically an example, um, and the town I chose is Springfield, and, and if you're in North America, uh, up here, who really hasn't been to Springfield, right, just about every state uh, here in North America has got a town called Springfield, so I figured, okay, that's an easy name we can use um, to tell you the example. So here's sort of a typical layout for a town, uh, Springfield. I'm uh, not sure which state it is in, uh, but let's say they've got a water and wastewater system that needs sort of monitoring and control. Uh, they could use radio, you know, certainly some of the other technologies, the older technologies we've looked at, but uh, given the geography, that's not going to be uh, easy. It's also going to be pretty expensive. 
well, like I said, we spoke about uh, the major disadvantages of both PSTN and lease line today. Um, and then if you think about fiber, well, trying to put fiber around an entire town is an extremely expensive exercise, uh, and your return on that investment is going to be very, very long. So if you look at that, like I said, radio certainly is a possibility, but given the geography that's going to be um, expensive, going to be time consuming, but today, remember I said that cellular coverage is ubiquitous. So can we use that network to create that remote uh, communications infrastructure between all of these different sites um, that is simple and secure uh, for the user to set up um, and then to make sure that it's always on as well. So if you look at their system, uh, for example, let's assume they've got sort of a master control center, um, a scalar thing. Um, that's both sort of the, the treatment plants. Um, you would then have sort of a bunch of water towers, um, you know, which supply the water to the town. Um, let's assume there's a bunch of booster pump stations that's supplying water to those tanks because there's fresh water. Um, and then, of course, you would have a series of wastewater pump stations around the city. Um, they will all need to communicate back to the host. Um, and so and this is where we're looking at to say, how can we look at cellular to create that network uh, that's simple, that's secure, and that's managed, where all of these sites can communicate back very easily um, to and cost-effectively back to the SCADA master. Before I do sort of get into the nuts and bolts of it, I wanted to give you a quick history on the cellular technology. Um, you know, today, most of you, I'm sure, would have heard of the term 5G. G basically stands for generation. So we are the fifth generation today. Um, cellular technology sort of really started around the 1980s, um, and it has grown. Um, you know, with each generation, you get better benefits, uh, primarily in terms of speed and bandwidth, uh, but also reliability and availability as well. Um, sort of, if you look at the first generation that came out, voice was starting to work okay, but there was really no data. Uh, fairly unreliable, uh, not a lot of coverage, so very limited coverage in sort of some of the more populous areas. Um, so for industry, that meant that it really did not offer them any advantages over what they were already using, and that was, at that time, radios was very, very popular, and then a combination of lease line and PSTN. So the adoption of that cellular when it first came out by industry was pretty much non-existent. Then when the technology jumped to the second generation of 2G, the speed went up. So now you had 9.6 kilobits per second for data. The data was starting to get more reliable, certainly voice was at this point. And then we saw the introduction of SMS technology, text messaging um, at 2G. Again, at this point, industry was still not on board completely. Fundamentally, because if you look at the speed uh, and the bandwidth, they already had that or they had something better with radios. So the reason to go to TG was not there. And again, cellular coverage was getting better, but was still spotty. Um, so if you're trying to do an in, uh, a critical infrastructure monitoring project, it was not very reliable. Then came third generation, which was at the start of the century. That certainly boosted things significantly, whether it was speed, or whether it was the available bandwidth, the reliability of the data service, but most importantly, the, the reliability of the coverage. Um, and that also introduced sort of a set of standards in terms of how carry networks would work globally, uh, with the common standard being GSM and then the second one being CDMA. So CDMA was adopted by North America, uh, Australia, um, and India, and then a few other countries, but generally around the world, so all, almost all of Europe, uh, a fair chunk of APAC, they all used uh, GSM technology. Uh, the U.S. started embracing that, and that's where we have got the two main providers, AT&T, which uses GSM, Verizon, that used to use uh, CDMA. But now with 4G, it's now called 4G slash LTE, very similar. So GSM won out in that. Um, and then with 4G, again, there was significantly higher speeds, bandwidth, significantly better reliability, availability of the network, and also that ubiquitous coverage. Um, it's pretty amazing today that you could go to some of the more developing countries and you could walk, go to certain areas where they may not have power or even fresh water. 
where they've got to go and get it. But just about every single household is going to have more than one cellular device where they're streaming stuff, um, whether it's music, whether it's their local television, whatever it is. But the, the, the impact that a smartphone or the cellular technology has had on commercially on the lives of people has been very, very significant. Um, and really, as that coverage and that reliability got better, industry jumped on board and started using it for some uh, applications, uh, especially in very remote areas. Uh, but also, it showed or, or it gave them the ability to use this uh, where they could reduce their initial costs. Okay. Um, like I said, coverage is pretty ubiquitous. Um, I don't think there's any place today you can go to where there is, you know, not a lot of cellular coverage. I mean, there's certainly some very remote areas even in North America where you're not going to get any coverage. Uh, but if there's no cellular, you're still covered by satellite um, in these areas. Okay, um, let's look at some of the types of cellular coverage. Um, if you look at um, um, the types. The first one is a public static SIM. So this is whereby every mobile device has got to have a SIM card. Um, and these SIM cards um, have got a voice number, a data number uh, for the data part. And then again with the, the 3G, 4G, they also came with the wireless internet connectivity, so they had an IP address. Uh, initially, they had sort of fixed IP addresses, and these were public. Um, Obviously, we all know that there is a very limited number of publicly available IP addresses, so this is sort of not a long-term solution. The other major disadvantage with that is because it's a public IP address, just about anybody can actually ping it, and you certainly do not want that in a critical infrastructure system. So I would recommend uh, against using uh, public uh, SIMs with public static IP addresses. Uh, the other types of cellular connectivity is a sort of is a private cellular network. Uh, these are expensive to set up, and they can be tied predominantly to a single carrier. So you, you, they're not carrier agnostic as such, and they require a fair bit of maintenance um, to set up. We've also got sort of uh, open VPN technology that you can use wirelessly. Um, again, this is good. It's a good solution, but it does require significant IT expertise and the maintenance is high because you're going to maintain things like certificates and so forth. Um, and then you've also now uh, dynamic SIMs, which is how every single cell phone operates today. Um, they don't get a fixed IP address. They get a dynamic IP address that if you reset the phone, turn off the power and stuff, they tend to change. Uh, again, good. But in terms of an industrial application, the dynamic SIM uh, actually requires additional services and maintenance because if you think about a remote application, if that remote location is only sending data and will never ever receive a command, then the dynamic SIM is fine because all it needs to know is one location where it has sent the data. But let's say the master needs to talk to the remote and if the remote has got a dynamic SIM, the master does not know how to get in touch with it. Um, and you can solve that problem, and there are solutions out there, but that's, again, another piece that you've got to you know, configure, maintain, um, which, again, makes it that a little bit more complex and not easy to use. So if you look at those challenges that are there with cellular communications when you're trying to create that remote network, what ProSoft did was to look at those challenges and say, how can we come up with something that is very, very simple, very secure, and that is managed by ProSoft um, so the customers can really focus on what they do, which is fundamentally ensuring that their process or their network is operational, uh, and hence the solution ProSoft Connect. So the analogy I like to use is think about ProSoft Connect as your phone. That's the foundation, the base. So you go and get your phone, but then to really make it operational, you kind of go and get your apps from the App Store, whether it's Netflix or Spotify or any of those applications. Uh, Connect is that platform that we use for all of our remote act, uh, connectivity type solutions, and we've got multiple applications that run on it. Um, today, we've got remote access. So this is where the user creates an on-demand tunnel to connect to that remote site. Uh, they're able to do the action that they want to do, which is you know, change a program, 
debugger program, whatever it is, and then disconnect. So this is manual, where they initiate the connection, do what they have to do, and then disconnect. And that's secure remote access. Um, and then we've got PDN, or the persistent data network. This is your always on, simple, secure, managed network for remote communications. So in this case, once the network is set up, it's always on. The sites on that network can communicate with each other. Okay, um, and then we've also got data logging, which allows you to, to log a lot of data uh, when you're on site and you can bring back that information. So fundamentally, you know, when communications are down or if you're trying to do maintenance or, you know, increase efficiency of your process, you can sort of get uh, a lot of diagnostic data that you can then analyze if you need to. And, and we're going to continue to add applications to ProSoft Connect uh, moving forward. These applications would be market driven. Uh, we see ProSoft Connect as one of the strengths for ProSoft and one of the business units, one of the, the stronger business units moving forward and a growth sector. So there is continuous investment going on um, in terms of adding features, capabilities, and new applications uh, to the Connect platform. Okay, so I want to bring the focus back on to PDN which is what we're going to do, uh, which is what the webinar is about, sorry. Um, so like I said, PDN is your simple, secure, managed, always on cloud-based network that you can use to communicate uh, with geographically dispersed sites like a SCADA telemetry type network. Uh, PDN was designed with simplicity and security in mind. Um, security, multiple layers, uh, what we call as defense in depth, uh, because we believe that security is not a one-stop stop. You want to look at, you know, not just the device, but the medium, uh, the data, the pipe, uh, the policies. Um, so it's it's sort of a complete overview, and we've used defense in depth, and I'm going to go through some of the features there um, so you can understand what we have. And then simplicity. Um, I mean, the analogy here I like to use is, let's say, for example, you're sitting on your desk and let's say you've got an FAT or an SAT for a remote uh, system um, and you need to prove that communications between these remote sites are all working um, so you can get that sign off on that FAT or SAT. Um, what you would typically do, especially in an FAT, is you would put a switch on the desk, you would connect all of these sites to the switch and then make sure you could test the communication so you know that sites are all talking to each other, they can talk back to the SCADA master, so forth. With PDN, we've taken that concept, so we've taken that switch that's on your desk, and we've put it in the cloud. And anything that you have connected to that switch, they can all talk to each other. So for example, one of the biggest advantages with the PDN network, you've got peer-to-peer -peer communications um, between various sites on a network right out of the box without you having to do any complex network management or route lists or anything like that. Okay, um, so uh, PDN is a managed network and it's managed by ProSoft. Um, we do use the Amazon Web Services to host uh, the Connect, but that service itself is managed by ProSoft. Um, so what are some of the main features of PDN? Um, it is a virtual switch in the cloud with absolutely no local software installations. Uh, any software installation actually creates one of the biggest vulnerability points um, for in terms of security on a network, uh, which is why IT is always behind to make sure that you've installed the patches, you're up to date, and so forth. Um, and then as soon as you put a piece of technical software, and let's say you've got 20 or 30 users that are using it, even if one of those users is not kept that uh, piece of technical software up to date with all of the patches installed, you've created a vulnerability point that not only is just you know, for that piece of software, but once they connect to the network, now the entire corporate network is exposed. With Connect, this is a cloud-native application designed to operate and run fully on the cloud. Um, we use microservices and containers to ensure high availability and reliability. Um, so the advantage there is, as a user, there's absolutely nothing you have to install, including any VPN software. So we use standard Microsoft VPN technology um, to ensure that we can create these tunnels.
high availability because of that cloud native architecture I mentioned. Um, reliability, uh, one of the things that we've done with ProSoft Connect is uh, what we've uh, done is to separate what we call as the data plane and the control plane. The data plane is what you use for communications between the remote sites and you want that to be completely robust, right? So no matter, unless of course the cellular network goes down, but if the network is connected, you want that to be clear, clean, so these sites can all talk to each other. The control plane is what we use to actually manage the device, so that is the gateway, you want to update firmware or you want to look at diagnostics, that's a control plane. So by separating those two, you can ensure sort of that uninterrupted communications uh, between these remote locations. Um, it is a layer two network, so it's a flat layer two network, which means all of your devices will need to be on the same subnet. Again, that makes it very simple. Um, and certainly what's required sort of from the market uh, for many of these networks. The increased speed and bandwidth, that should allow you to bring back more data more frequently um, you know, you compared to any traditional radio system. The cellular uh, access gives you higher bandwidth and higher speeds. Uh, we've got a very comprehensive audit trail of user activity for forensic review. So this audit trail can actually be downloaded and saved as a CSV file if you need to. Um, obviously, it cannot be edited um, online, uh, but this tells you everything from, you know, did the gateways disconnect from the network, how long did they disconnect for, who logged in, what time did they log in, and so forth. One key thing to remember is we create this network between the sites, so, you know, we create that secure VPN tunnel. What we don't do is actually we do not look at your data or we do not monitor that. Okay, um, but all we simply do is simply create that tunnel and then you can put whatever you want through in that. Um, carrier agnostics, it's one of the most important uh, features about this. So even if you look at the image that's currently uh, being displayed, you could have, for example, this particular cellular gateway, you know, one of the gateways could be on Verizon, another one could be in AT&T, the third one could be on T-Mobile. Um, in fact, one of those sites could be located in Germany or could be located in the UK. It really does not matter where they are. Um, and it does not matter which carrier it is. Once they connected via the ProSoft Connect service um, and they're in the PDN project, we create a network. At that point, the carrier becomes completely irrelevant. So we are truly carrier agnostic. Um, it's a great advantage, especially if you've got a huge area. You look at areas like Texas, where you've got a customer that might cover a very, very large area. You're not going to have the same cellular coverage everywhere. And you might have you know, Verizon that's strong in one area, AT&T that's strong in one area. But you can still have all of these sites communicate to a single master if you wanted to operate sort of the single network. Uh, PDN is subscription based, um, you know, and your rates, they can be as low as $4 a month. Obviously, it depends on your subscription period and the number of sites, but you're talking anywhere between, you know, $15 a month through to $4. It's extremely cost effective. If you kind of, for a return on investment type calculation, if you look at a system, let's say, that's got about, just to make it easy and simple, let's say you've got a site which has got, say, 10 remote sites, and if you try and do it, you know, a greenfield project and you try and do it via radio, that's going to cost you, you know, between all of the installations, the cost of the hardware and so forth, and I'm not including the cost of the automation, just the communications. Um, your initial investment is probably anywhere between thirty and $40,000 for those sites. Um, if you look at same thing with the PDN network, with the ProSoft gateway solution, uh, you're talking roughly five grand for the gateways. Um, and then, you know, for those 10 sites, your yearly costs um, could be, you know, less, uh, um, could be less than $1,000 a year, um, you know, between $1,100, $1,200. So if you look at that return on investment versus spending, you know, 30 to 40 K, um, that's pretty significant. And the advantage here is you get newer technology that's faster, more bandwidth, very secure, very reliable. Uh, we've had a question come through. Oh, yeah. Um, and the question was about the data limit, about two gig per month. 
um, in our case. So the, the question here is from Mr. Gurupal Sandhu, and he says, in our case, we have six to seven pump stations, and we do need to monitor control, maybe up to 100 or more points for each station. So is it two gig uh, per month enough for this application? Um, that's a great question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sandhu. So we actually have um, a very similar application today running here in the New England area where the customers got about um, 12 to 14 pump stations that they're monitoring, and they're bringing back 100 points as well. Um, they are pulling these remote sites every 10 seconds, so that's your frequency, and their data usage per month um, on these sites is about a gig of data. Um, now, you're right in that the data limit per site is actually two, big, two gig, but what we do is we calculate it for the entire system. So let's say if you've got uh, 20 sites in your system, the per month data limit is 40 gigabytes. That We don't count, so if one gateway uses a little bit more, one's using less, that's perfectly fine. We actually count it on the system. So we basically take the number of nodes or the number of gateways you have in the system, we multiply that, that, that number by two to give you your total monthly data usage. And we do realize, you know, you're going to have applications that requires more data. Um, it is simply a discussion that you need to have with your uh, local uh, regional sales director or your local distributor, uh, and then communicate back to ProSoft to say we actually need more data. Um, that's, it, it's a fairly simple, easy discussion to have. Okay, um, so one of the things I wanted to make sure, obviously, is you know, as soon as we mentioned the word cloud, um, you've got IT that's a little bit concerned. Um, we wanted, to, I wanted to take the time and explain that this is both OT friendly and IT secure. Um, and if you look at PDN through the Connect platform, um, the OT friendly features, it's very, very easy to configure and set up. And I'm going to go through the steps. Um, it's literally half a dozen steps and you, you've got your network. I mean, it literally takes 10 minutes to set up a network. It really is that simple. Um, so it's a virtual switch in the cloud with layer two networking, so it's simple. You've got that separated data and control plane, so it gives you very, very high reliability in terms of your remote communications no software to install or maintain or learn and understand. You've got that increased bandwidth and speed, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer communications between your remote sites, and of course the other advantage you have is anytime, anywhere remote access. So if I was to go back to the previous slide, one of the advantages you have with the cellular network and because it's cloud-based is let's say for example you go home um, on Friday at 4 p.m. and there's a call in for emergency to say, no, we need your help. If you're using radio, you need to have a radio with you that you're, you get on the network, you can remotely access, or you've got to connect to a remote PC, uh, you know, dial in to remote desktop and then access your site and so forth. And they've all got, you know, you've got speed and latency issues, you've got security issues that you've got to consider and so forth. One of the advantages with ProSoft Connect is you've got this remote access that actually works over the PDA network as well. Um, so in this case, you simply uh, get, uh, get on your uh, platform, you log in, and we do support two-factor authentication. Um, so you get that secure login, and then you can individually access that gateway um, to make sure uh, that that's the only gateway you connect to and then you can connect to the automation devices behind it and then do what you have to do. Um, and in fact, when you do that, we actually don't count that data towards your PDN data limit. So every PDN network, you know, you've got this two gig per site, which is calculated on the system. On top of that, you've got an additional gigabyte of data for remote access. So for example, if you log in remotely and change a program, that takes data but that's not communication data, and we don't count that towards PDN. We count that separately. Okay. Um, if you look at the IT security, um, we've, our tunnels are encrypted with 256 bit AES. We do use the username and password for the tunnel. That's a one time use only. The user will never see it, um, it's being behind. So when the tunnel disconnects, a new username and password is generated, which we then use to connect back to the network. 
We've got an independent service that does regular pen testing to ensure the reliability and the security of the network. Um, and that, and then again, because you're cloud native, that allows us to be proactive uh, rather than reactive in looking at any vulnerabilities that may come up. And hence the reason we've got this service um, that's continuously looking at uh, the ProSoft Connect. Uh, for IT, there's no software to maintain. Uh, you've got that audit trail. They can go back and look at who logged in at any time um, and how long they were on. And I'm not sure if these audience, uh, there was a webinar that I did several months ago about a concept called VLotto, which will lock out Tagar. Um, so again, I think most of you guys would know what um, lockout tagout is, um, you know, in the, in the plant flow where you don't want to accidentally energize the machine, we've taken that principle and we've applied it to the remote access part where you have to request permission electronically before uh, you can connect to the sites. So again, it gives you that additional level of security um, for remote access if you've got some remote employees wanting to connect and so forth. And then we've got the two-factor authentication uh, for your login. Vishal? Yes. Uh, we do have a question under the Q&A. Okay. Got another question that's coming? Uh, yeah, under the Q&A. Can you see it? Yep. I thought I answered that question from uh, Mr. Gurupal Sandhu. Oh, no. This is under uh, the question and answer. Oh, I uh how do i see that uh there's a bar at the bottom ah there you go i can see that there you go sorry i was looking at the chat window okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so this one uh this question is from mr kuyan suwagi um so is there an option for the system to log continuously remote data from remote sites on the cloud if yeah if yes what are cloud options in terms of size um fantastic question thank you again for this we're get, actually getting ready um, to enable or to launch this. Um, this will happen over the next few weeks, but using our data logger module, which can store up to 16 million records locally, uh, that can then be stored in the cloud as well. Um, the idea being obviously, you know, the, the more you store and the longer you store for, uh, that's going to take, uh, you know, it's going to cost you more and take more space. but we'll have the ability to transfer that data directly either by FTP um, or other means, um, or you can generate sort of JSON messages to retrieve that data as well, and then have that imported directly into your systems. So that service is not released today, but we're going through some testing and that's imminent and that's gonna happen. Um, we've got another question to say, how does this compare to Cradle Point or Stride Remote Products? Uh, again, a very good question. Um, so if you look at Cradle Point, for example, they're specific to North America. Uh, they certainly play more in the commercial space than industrial space or things like commercial um, networks, like transportation networks. Um, it's not as simple as PDN, and I'd recommend you to give it a try, whether it's in terms of the pricing structure, whether it's in terms of setting up the network, um, you know, all the protocol support. I mean, these gateways support Ethernet IP protocol. Um, so you can do, for example, send text messages. You can get all of your diagnostics into your SCADA system on the gateway as an add-on instruction. So there are quite a number of advantages uh, where this is sort of an industrially focused solution uh, for industrial customers. So I'm going to bring back uh, all of you to Springfield again, uh, I mean, as exciting as the name sounds, uh, to go over that cellular coverage. So the fact that you've now got that cellular coverage, um, if you think about the implementation uh, for them, the PDN as a solution, it's actually quite simple. You know, all they have to do is to create an account. They get the required number of gateways, you know, activate those gateways and connect and create that PDN project they don't have to create the network, and that's a clear difference. So they just create the PDN project, drop in all the gateways that they want to talk to each other in it. As soon as that's done, the network is up and running, and they all communicate to each other. It really is that simple. Um, so let's look at those steps. Uh, uh, let's look at this step uh, to say um, how easy it is to create that network. Okay, 
Thank you, Tomas. So step one, to create your, uh, your PDN network, you go to prosoft.io um, and you can actually uh, sign on and you can sign on for free but you got to make sure that you're using the right email address because this is the one that we're going to use to enable the PDN. Right. Um, it is simple as that. Um, you would then purchase the right subscription that you would need. Again, like I said, you know, based on the number of gateways and the period that you need it for. Um, you provide us with that email address so we can enable the subscription for you. And then at that point, you're good to go where you can connect back in and log in. You create a project. Um, whatever it is, sort of a project. You select the type of project, which should be persistent data network, um, and then enter in the client IP uh, address range. So this is probably the only step where you'll need to read the instructions. Um, you know, in the others, it's quite obvious and you can go through, but this one, you gotta read the instructions. Fundamentally, this one is there. Uh, when you do remotely connect to the, um, to the platform, uh, we want to make sure that that, uh, that experience is very easy, very simple, straightforward, um, and gives you the idea of that you're actually sitting in front of the unit. So this is actually the range of IP address for that remote device, you know, your PC that you're trying to connect to, uh, to make sure that when you do connect, you're on that same network as your automation devices. So once you've done that, you click on Create Project, and bingo, your project is created. At this point, the only thing you will need to do is to add gateways to this project. And you can add gateways by a couple of ways. Uh, you can add it by entering an activation code, uh, which will be given to you when you, let's say you take the gateway out of the box, you go into its default web page to configure um, parameters. Um, and then at the very last step, it says this is a code you're going to need to activate this gateway on connect. So you enter that code in, it activates a gateway, at that point, you can manage your device in ProSoft Connect. Um, you can also, if you've got an existing network of devices, you can transfer that across as well. So that's another way uh, to add gateways to your project. Once you've done that, your project is going to look something like this. You'll notice here, there's the indication for the PDN. Um, and now all of these gateways are connected you know, like that switch in the cloud and the automation devices behind those gateways are also all connected to talk to each other. So remember I said it's a layer two flat network. So as long as they're on the same subnet, they'll be able to talk to each other. That's it, that's, it's as simple as that. From a network perspective, uh, from creating that project, that's all you have to do. Everything else is managed by ProSoft. So it is very, very simple. Um, that example that I mentioned um, that we had here in the UK, or those which I worked on, um, it literally took us just a few minutes to create the network. The longest time was actually installing all of the gateways at locations. Um, I wanted to go through the diagnostics um, a little bit. Um, this was the activity log that I mentioned. Um, so this is this very detailed activity log which tells you which user was connected when, how long they were on for, and if gateways, for example, were lost, it lost connection to the PDA network and it reconnected, you've got that timestamp in here uh, that you can export and save. Um, it's the same screenshot of the same thing. Okay, um, wanted to look at some of the boundaries. Um, so, for example, PDN is not designed for class one Ethernet IP. Um, you know, your class one messages are generated every 400 uh, microseconds. You obviously don't want to do that with the cellular network. You're just going to flood this network. So it's not really designed for that. Um, but if you do use an ETAP device in between, then yes, you can do that. Um, your layer two networking, I said, that means that you've got this flat structure where they all have to be on a subnet. Um, layer three is in our roadmap, but that's not available today. Um, and then because it's a layer two network, you're limited to 100 sites per network. And that's quite a large number. You can actually create lots of projects, um, which means um, it is not really a limitation, but in a single network, you can have up to 100 gateways um, and then a total of 255 devices. Okay, um, so I just wanted to leave you um, sort of as a summary slide with sort of the top three reasons why a customer should consider cloud-based 
um, cloud-based managed infrastructure network for communications to your remote assets. Um, and again, if you look at the overview, the, the history of remote communications, where we are, where we were, and where we came to, really the cloud base makes a lot of sense. Where you've got that reduced initial and ongoing operational cost, you've got quick network deployment, uh, very quick, and it's an always connected real-time network. Uh, PDN should be that solution for you because it is simple, secure, and managed. You've got anytime, anywhere remote access and you've got a single platform, the Connect platform, that you can use both for device and network management and also your diagnostics as well. So that was the last slide of my presentation. Um, I am now going to open this up for questions. Um, so we've got about, we've got plenty of time, we've got about 15 minutes. So please feel free to either type in your question or if you'd like to unmute and ask a question, more than happy to do that. Okay, there's a question to say, is there a PowerPoint? Um, yes, we can make this PowerPoint available. There will also be a recording of this session uh, that uh, will be sent out uh, to all of the attendees. Uh, there's a question coming in from uh, Mr. Nikhil Malotra that says, are there any plans in moving ProSoft Connect of Amazon? I asked because my understanding is that your prices would be based on what Amazon charges you. So uh, thank you for the question, Mr. Nickel. Um, today our service does run on Amazon. Yes, obviously our pricing is based on what they would charge us. Um, given that we've used the microservices uh, and containers architecture to design this application, this can really run on any platform, whether it's Google Cloud or whether it's uh, Microsoft Azure or even an on-prem solution. And so if you don't want to use a cloud and you want to be able to run this on um, locally, um, there are all possibilities. Um, and it's certainly designed to do that fairly easily and simply. So if that is something of interest, I would suggest you contact um, our local representative and then we can get the conversation going. Surely there's gotta be other questions. Ian, do we need to unmute everyone or can they unmute themselves? Uh, they should be able to unmute themselves. Okay. Got another question. Okay. Um, we've got a question which says IP addressing is my concern. Um, so I'm assuming um, that uh, the person is talking about the limitation about the layer two networking. So today we do support, remember when this ProSoft Connect was designed in PDN, we looked at simplicity, we looked at security, um, obviously we manage. So many of the networks, the size, the market research showed that, that we would be okay, but we fully understand that layer two is a restriction on some applications. And again, if you've got a need that where you need support for layer three, please contact us. It is on our roadmap. It is something that we will get done. Uh, but today, like I said, it is very much a layer two network. Okay, we've got a question in from um, Mr. Tello. And the question here is, if we have a network with two gateways, when a gateway has rebooted, the connection with the other gateway will be restored automatically? Absolutely, yes. If the gateway reboot, you know, you updated the firmware or it's lost temporary connection, come back on. Uh, yes, it will automatically reconnect and the network will be reestablished. We've got another question uh, from Mr. Puyan Zawagi. Can we give access for the PDN network to client so client can see all their network from master device but not have access to other projects? Absolutely, yes. Um, except you can create multiple projects, up to 50, and you can have up to 25 users for each project. And when they log in, they will only be able to see their project. Do we have any other questions? We went to this. Fantastic. Okay, so if there's no other questions, that would be the end of our presentation. So thank you again for taking your time and, and joining us for this webinar. I hope you found this very useful um, and educational. Um, if you've got any questions or you're interested in doing a demo or understanding further, please feel free to contact uh, your local ProSoft representative and we can certainly help you um, to solve your communication needs. Thank you again.
and goodbye.